All right, let's look at some trinomials. Now we're going to have coefficients of x squared. Now we should still look and see if we can factor anything out that's common amongst all three terms, all right? So if we can do that, then it should make things a little bit easier. Um, after we do that, we still have to look at it in this form. So now we're going to look at the factors of a times c, all right? So in the last few examples, we were just taking the c value and splitting it up into factors. Now we've got to look and see what a times c is. Whatever that is, I don't know, some number, then we're going to factor out a list from that number, a times c. All right. Uh, when we do that, again, the sum of those two numbers should equal the b value here in the middle. And then we're going to factor that out. We're going to split it up into two other terms so that we can factor by grouping. Most of these will come out, well, they'll come out kind of pretty. If not, then usually we just can't factor by grouping or factor the trinomial at all. So, All right, so here's a problem. Now, the first thing we should say to ourselves is self. Is there any factor that we can take out of all three terms, right? Well, the nice thing about this one is 3 is our leading coefficient there, the a value. And, well, 19 doesn't not divisible by 3. So we know there's no common factors to take out of this thing. So what we will do is take the a value, which is 3. The c value is 20. When we add, uh, sorry, when we multiply them, 3 times 20, we get 60. And we want this, well, we need a zero there, that's better. The b value in this case is negative 19. So 60, we can split up. I got 1 and 60. So, well, the negative values won't help us there either. So I, I'm going to do this one a little bit faster. If you want me to go slower, you got to tell me, all right? Uh, the next one would be <coughs> 2 and 30. So if we add those two together, it's nowhere near 19 yet. But well, let's try 3 and uh, 20. Uh, we're getting closer, but let's look at these ones. We got 3 and 20. Let's add those two. We get 23. If I make both of these negative and we add them, we get negative 23. Still no good. So let's try uh, 4. 4 and 15. This one seems like it'll work. Uh, 4 plus 15 is 19. Well, we need a negative 19. So we're just going to make these both negative. And now when we add these two, we get the negative 19, which we wanted. All right, so I've got my 3x squared. But my negative 19x, I'm going to split into, you want the negative 4 or the negative 15 first? Negative 4. So I've got a negative 4x. And if I subtract 15x, then I get that negative 19x right there. See how it just splits up? Which makes this very convenient for um, factoring by grouping. So, plus 20. Oh yeah. Yep, and the plus 20. Very good. So again, we focus on these two terms at a time. So let's look at this first two. Uh, we can't factor a 3 or a 4 from either one of those two terms. But what we can factor out is an x. So if I take an x away from the 3x squared, I'd have a 3x. And then I'm going to subtract. If I take an x out from that 4x, then I've just got a 4. Now all of this would have been added together. Right, we could put a plus a negative 15x, that's okay. Let's look at negative 15x and the 20. So a negative 15x plus 20. Um, what we should do is factor out a negative, because we always want that first term to be positive. So what that's going to do, right, is I can just take the negative out. That makes that a positive 15x, but that now is a negative 20. Uh, from 15x... I'll do it in green. 15x 
factored would be 3 times 5 times x. 20 is 2 times 2 times 5. So the greatest common factor for these two is 5. So I'm going to factor out a 5 from both of these. A negative 5, I should put that in there. Because we did factor out that negative, right? Um, that becomes a negative 5. And then what's left over from the 15x? I have a 3x. And you'll see why we need that negative as well here. What's left over from the 20? I got 2 times 2, but it was minus. So minus 4. See how it kind of became the same multiple here? The same factor right there with the 3x minus 4. Because now what we can do is we can factor out a 3x minus 4 from both terms. And what would we have left over? Well, I got the x. And then I got that minus 5. And that is our final answer. What happens is you have a negative 5, and then whatever was left over from the inside, 3x plus 4. So...